Norman with I Save Tractors. In this video, I'm going to be repairing this two-stage 42-inch snowblower off of this old Ford LGT 165. Let's do it. Here we go. So here's the snowblower already removed from the tractor. Taking the snowblower off of this Ford LGT is pretty simple. You just remove these three pins right here, the one on the left, the long one in the middle, and the one on the right, and then you can just pull the snowblower forward. To make it easier, you can lower the snowblower onto a moving dolly first, then remove the pins, and then pull it off. So this bearing right here, which is behind the impeller that blows the snow out of the chute, this bearing is absolutely toast. This is what's motivating this repair. Best case scenario, I can just remove this bearing and bearing housing and slide on another one. Let's see if we're that lucky today. To remove the chain, I first have to remove this chain tensioner. And then after that, I have to remove this master link. To remove the master link, you just use a little screwdriver, pop off this little retainer tab, and then the master link will push right out. Here's a close up view of the bearing. As you can see, it looks pretty bad. The bearing definitely broke apart. It's a good thing I'm making this repair now. To remove this little sprocket, it's just held on there with a little set screw. Undo the set screw, and if you're lucky, it'll push right out. Mine's a little stuck, so I just use a little gear puller. It just took a tiny little pressure to pop it off. Look at what's left of that bearing. That is the inner and outer bearing race, or what's left of it, the pieces of it. That's uh, part of the bearings. It has completely melted and disintegrated apart. Just due to age and use, this is a 40-year-old snowblower after all. And unfortunately, as I'm pulling the remainder of the bearing races out, I see that the bearing has disintegrated, and I must have kept using it after it failed and I've actually worn a really deep groove into the shaft. I'll give you a closer look once I get this uh, whole impeller out of the snowblower housing. To get the rest of the snowblower parts out so I can remove that center impeller, I have to remove this front auger. In order to do that, I have to remove both of the side bearings, remove the drive chain, remove the center connection between the impeller and the auger, and then everything pulls out just like this. And here is the rest of the shaft that's behind the impeller. As you can see, it is all supposed to be a uniform size, but that space where the bearing was is cut pretty deep into it. So in order to fix this, I'm going to have to take it to our machine shop partner, Bracket Machine in Westbrook, Maine. They're going to weld it up, remachine it so it's all one uniform diameter. And when they're done with it, it looks like this. Much, much better. This is the new bearing and bearing housing right here. And I'm just going to dry test fit it over the shaft. Look at that. Great, excellent fit. This is going to work out perfect.
To reassemble, you just put everything back together the way you took it off, just in reverse. When you put this uh, front auger back in, you kind of have to stretch and bend the snowblower housing a little bit to get everything into place, as you'll see in a moment. I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on some of the shaft to bearing surfaces since these are used in the winter and it's wet. I do everything I can for when I need to remove these in the future for service, the anti-seize will make it so these will slide right off and prevent any further damage. Hold on, buddy, I'm videotaping. Hold on, buddy. No, hold on, because I like to keep the audio of the work. So just wait a second. Nope. And your audio keeps showing up in the video, so stop. Just give me two seconds to finish this. Uh, uh, uh. When you see you come in here and you look first, and when you see me still doing this, you stop talking and you wait patiently. Thank you, bud. Disciplining you.
Here I put a new chain on it. This is a number 40 roller chain. I'm putting the master link back on. You just put it back on the way you took it off. You slide it through, you put the little end plate on, then you snap the retainer in. And then after that, I put on my chain tensioner back. I made this chain tensioner when I first got this snowblower out of Delrin. Made it on my lathe. And it just helps keep the chain tight. You don't want to make it too tight because then you'll wear the bearing down prematurely. That's probably what happened to me. Uh, but you want to make it just so it's uh, tight enough, just like this. Next up is the chain to drive the front auger. Putting that back on right here. The snowblower is now repaired. Now all I have to do is put it back on the tractor. To make it easier, I'm going to lift it up, put, move a mover's dolly under it, and then I can push it into position in front of the tractor, replace the pins, and be good to go. Now, when you put the snowblower back onto the tractor, you have to maneuver the drive shaft into place before you push it all the way home. The fact that this is on a mover's dolly makes maneuvering this big, heavy snowblower much, much easier. By the way, if you've noticed that little uh, electric motor that operates the chute control, yeah, I built that. You should uh, check out the video on that build. I'll put a card up in the screen right here. I think it's very interesting. It works great. This last center pin is a little challenging. I had to take the mover's dolly off and then kind of block it up on a 2x4. Uh, you can kind of see it at the bottom of the screen. That put me in the just the right height to line up this pinhole. Now it's time to test it out. Let's start it up and see how everything works.
Well, there you have it. The tractor's all fixed now. The snowblower is ready for another main winter. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I have over 150 videos, I believe, all about saving these old vintage garden tractors, the engines, the implements, to the rear ends, everything. And by the way, don't forget this ch whole channel is sponsored by iSaveTractors.com. We are the leading developers in aftermarket parts for your vintage small engines. Engines like power this Ford LGT 165. We make full-blown rebuild kits for the 16-horse Kohler K341 that drives this particular tractor. We also make a variety of pistons, rods, carburetors, ignition coils, pretty much everything for all of the old vintage air-cooled cast iron engines like the old Kohler K-Series, KT Twin, Magnum, K42, 532, 582, the old Tecumseh cast iron engines, Briggs & Stratton cast iron engines, and now for 20 20 parts for the old Onan CCK engine lines, B series, P series. Please look no further than isavetractors.com. Once again, my name is Norman. See you next time.